So what blockchain technology does for you is it basically creates an audit trail and it gives you one place where all the action can happen. So where the contracts can live and where the warrants and representations can make and basically uh, the governance of these assets and so forth. Uh, and Midnight basically gives you the identity and the privacy component of that. And Cardano is becoming increasingly more transactable, meaning we're going to be able to do a lot more volume very soon, thanks to Midgard and later Laos and these other innovations. And we can do those things interoperable with many other ecosystems, like Bitcoin, for example. Real world assets kind of have been a hot topic now for, for a while. How do you see maybe Zengate and Palmyra integrating Midnight? I know you talked a little bit about credentials. Can you maybe yeah. talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, so Midnight is a toolkit and uh, it's there to work with other ledgers and you can deploy native on Midnight or as a hybrid application on Cardano and Midnight or potentially Midnight and Ergo, for example. So you can kind of choose your own adventure of what infrastructure makes the most sense and you pay the fees and kind of the underlying token that makes most sense for your reference customer. And you look at a lot of different things. For example, are what is the the the, the nature of the real world asset? So fractionalized gold, for example, is a world of difference from something like real estate. So when you think of real estate, your your sales latency is going to be very infrequent. You're not trading the same piece of land 400 times a day. Maybe you sell it every few months or every few years or every, maybe every few decades. And then typically the amount of metadata associated with the asset is going to be radically different based on its nature. So gold is, or any commodity, they tend to be very standardized in the way that we present them. Whereas real estate is totally bespoke. You know, you got everything from the, uh, from, uh, you know, the, the mineral rights, the land rights and the water rights and who has easements. And there's so many different things there and some are private arrangements and some are public arrangements. So both of those are real world assets, but they obviously are radically different concepts uh, from, from these different things. So you take a look at your, your, your asset schema. And then based on that, you kind of then figure out, okay, what's the best way of representing this? And that's typically also connected to the marketplaces and the people in those marketplaces who will be consuming that. So those marketplaces uh, could be things like regulated stock exchanges, for example, or commodities exchanges, or those marketplaces can be a DAX and be completely decentralized. And then the people who buy it, those can be anonymous people, pseudonymous people, or regulated, fully vetted and verified people that have strong KYC uh, that's behind that, that go through multiple steps. And then also, what are the contractual terms that typically get involved here? Because you know, when you do these things, usually there's there's some notion of a consumer understanding of warranties and representations, refund policy, delivery terms, all these things. So commodities is very standardized. Whereas real estate, uh, there are standardized templates that are geographically bound, but they're within those templates, highly customizable, earnest money and time of delivery and disclosures and, you know, these types of things. So what blockchain technology does for you is it basically creates an audit trail and it gives you one place where all the action can happen. So where the contracts can live and where the warrants and representations can make and basically uh, the governance of these assets and so forth. Uh, and Midnight basically gives you the identity and the privacy component of that. And Cardano is becoming increasingly more transactable, meaning we're going to be able to do a lot more volume very soon, thanks to Midgard and later Laos and these other innovations. And we can do those things interoperable with many other ecosystems like Bitcoin, for example. And so then you can start thinking of emergent properties of that. For example, what if I want to do a real estate transaction, but I want to collateralize it with Bitcoin and I want to keep the buyers private, but verifiable to the regulators in the jurisdiction on midnight and then I want it to settle on Ergo. That would be like a pattern. And when you talk about hybrid applications, you can put these things together as a bespoke pattern. And maybe we want the discovery of this to happen through an auction process that Palmyra uh, runs, for example. Uh, and maybe there are assets in the Palmyra ecosystem, uh, commodities, for example, that are gonna be used as part of collateral or insurance for that transaction. Because you think about the developing world, it's like, well, a lot of people have no liquidity. 
but they have farmland, they have agricultural output, they have all these different characteristics. And so when I go for credit, where do I get my credit worthiness from? Well, if I could collateralize or tokenize my yields of my farm or my commodities, but I don't necessarily want to give them up, but I just want to put post them as collateral and don't allow rehypothecation. Well, that, that's an example of an asset flow of the future. And you sh usually those things are very complicated, very expensive to do, and, and usually reserved for large entities with lawyers and case-by-case -case basis. Well, what blockchain does is it brings that economy of scale way, 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 way down and makes it accessible to somebody who makes $50 a month or $100 a month. It also allows you to template a lot of these things and create marketplaces and liquidity for them. So, you know, if I want to get commodities, but I don't need delivery for six months, maybe I take the collateral and insure it. And if they default, I get that yield. So that's how I get some coconuts or something like that. And if I do it 700 times, maybe I now actually have enough coconuts to have King Supers be able to get all of its coconuts in the winter, you know, from that thing. You see, and that's the kind of magic you see. I, I, we can't predict that ahead of time, right? We just, it just occurs organically uh, through market dynamics. But the thing is, the transaction fee will be very low you know, through all this, because all these things are just kind of parameters and a kind of a meta smart contract. And it's a choose your own adventure for putting these things together. <laughs>